All right. <clears throat> Make sure we get everything situated here. <clears throat> all right um i think the audio is working so let me know if you guys hear me because you know sometimes it just the audio looks like it's working but it's not actually working um but we got 30 people in here thank you for being here <clears throat> all right good morning matt says bradley i don't know what's going on with my screen i'm gonna have to like shut down my computer uh later today because for some reason it's giving me like something that's blocking off the chat here uh it's weird but good morning everybody let's say our good mornings we just started so we're about two minutes in I appreciate uh, anybody that is here, whether you're on Twitch, you're on Kick, uh, you're on YouTube. Um, you know, thank you guys for being here. Or if you're a subscriber or a member, again, thank you. <clears throat> um, hi, hi, hey, blue collar uh, crypto um, edu, Mr. P. Thank you for showing up. Uh, it's good. Hear you loud and clear. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. Uh, XRP will make us rich. Unlimited toilet paper. I don't know if you're saying unlimited toilet paper as in you're, you, you know, wipe your butt cheeks with, uh, with uh, XRP or we're going to have unlimited toilet paper, meaning that we have a lot of money. I don't understand. I don't know what you're going with or going with that. <clears throat> um, Lunic supply is still high, but the 0.5% burn tax is a lot better than the 0.2 percent uh, a 1.2 percent or two percent would would uh be better than useless utilities yeah i i sort of would agree i know there's a lot of people that are for utilities and will completely argue against um you know my point my take on what we want to see with certain positions um and you know i can say oh that's their opinion but as they argue that point, um, it it ends up dividing the community as you see people that, that are not on the same page. And, you know, what I tend to do, and I'm not saying like I'm better than anybody else, what I tend to do with Terra Luna Classic is I will um I will go with what the community is is, you know, the path that we're going on, right? I still believe in burns. Um, I still will talk about burns, but the point is, is that if the community is going more towards a utility route, um, I want to see it through and, you know, see it either work or, or not work. Right. Um, but I'm going to, you know, push to make sure that we're successful in that path. Right. Or at least establishing that path. Um, Oh, you were a little bit off from the the super chat. Hopefully it still reads it. I don't know if it'll still read it. Cause it's like a minimum of two ninety nine that will get the 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 super chat um voice to text or text to speech, I mean. 
let's see. Thank you for liking. I appreciate it. 71% of people uh, have liked it. We got 24 likes for 40 people that are here. I appreciate it. Um, let me go down the list. Uh, good day from Melbourne. Well, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for watching, joining the live stream, all of that. Uh, good morning. What's up, everybody? Uh, all good here. <clears throat> They're burning a lot of USTC if the latest uh, prop passes, though. Yes. Um, burning basically or, you know, 800, what, 800 million or something like that. That's not bad at all. Uh, I'm a big fan of literally just cutting it. I mean, I for USTC, most of that is... Uh, thank you, Josh, for subscribing. Appreciate that. Um, good morning, uh, man. What do you think about Unibot? I don't think I've ever looked into Unibot. Is it a, a position or is it... I would imagine it's like a trading bot or something. I don't think I ever looked into this position. Thank you for the um, the super chat, by the way. Let's go ahead and look at uh, this position since uh, you did send a super chat, uh, you know, for this you know, breakdown. So for Unibot, and hopefully this is what you're you're talking about here. <clears throat> um, we're seeing this at a uh, one hundred and twenty one dollars. It keeps fluctuating, actually, one hundred and twenty one to one hundred and twenty five. Um, seeing it up about two percent on the day. Market cap shows that it's up 7%. Um, I see it keeps fluctuating, so 2% to 5%. Uh, we're now seeing <clears throat> that the market cap is at $121 million. <coughs> um, we're also seeing that the volume is actually down over the last day, uh, down 21%, um, but at a $10.6 million market cap. With uh, if we're looking at the popularity, I like to see anything really above that 10% mark when it comes to volume to market cap ratio. Um, so you are seeing this right below that point, but you could see that popularity, especially if it wasn't down in the volume of 20%. Uh, you probably would see that push up to that 10% mark. You do have 1 million coins um, in circulation and uh, a total of 1 million coins. So that's fantastic. <clears throat> to know that you have a max supply uh, of 1 million and um, you know how much that can grow from only having that very, very low supply. I love seeing things with a lower supply, which is absolutely phenomenal. If we look at history of where this has been, it's been to um, $180 more recently, um, but this has uh, been around for, or at least on CoinMarketCap, for about um, you know two months or so. Um, but hit a high of $188, which would have been a $188 or $187 uh, million dollar market cap. It makes it easy for math and easy, you know, for you guys maybe understanding it and or everybody understanding. Um, we saw a 600% increase in the overall price in the last, you know, two months or so. Um, again, fully diluted market cap, $125, $122 uh, million dollar market cap. So. Uh, let's see where it's available on 12 different markets, which is not bad at all. Seeing on MEXC, L Bank, um, you know, buy, uh, buy box, <clears throat> bit true. So different places to where you can buy it, but it's not listed on the top exchanges, which could be very, very interesting uh, for a lot of people. Now, I've never looked into this position, but honestly, if I would have looked into the position uh, before it hit $100 plus, I would definitely say that this um, is a strong candidate for, you know, an investment, right? Seeing it at $22 or $25 um, with a million coins that's out there. And I don't know what the popularity was like then, um, the volume was like. So I would have liked to have seen that. But it uh, looks very, very interesting here. I want to see how many holders are in the position real quick. Uh, 5,152, which you don't really need that much because you only have a million total supply that's there. I do want to look at the holders. Um, so the top 13 wallets have about over 1%, which is not horrible. Um, it's not horrible at all, actually. Um, you're not seeing any that really control the overall price movement of the position or the, the outcome of, you know, what this can be. So that's a good thing to see. 
Now, uh, I guess to get an explanation a little bit of, you know, what is a Unibot? Introducing Unibot, the fastest telegram Uniswap sniper that facilitates lightning fast swaps and snipers uh, accessible to all users with a 1% transaction fee. Unibot stands out uh, from its competitor, you know, competitors primarily due to its uh, exceptional speed driven by advanced algorithms and robust infrastructure. Um, this includes private nodes for snipers, um, a private transaction option for uh, buying and selling tokens, wallet monitoring, and a token tracker. Unibot token holders enjoy various benefits, including reduced fees for util utilizing um, the platform's utilities, accessing to or access to uh, additional perks such as reserved premium nodes, leading to faster transactions, advanced algorithms like uh, MEV protection and private transactions. Among the Unibot tools are. Um, a fast buy and sell platform interesting mirror sniper enable uh, mirror sniper enabling users to copy the the trades of other wallets that's even more interesting kind of sounds like uh what is it what is that uh i can't I can't remember what it's called where you you copy others uh trades i for some reason i can't remember the the platform but someone will probably remind me uh, a token launch um channel uh, providing real-time information and a newly deployed tokens uh, method sniper allowing users to input up to three token addresses for uh, sniping at launch wallet management and p pnl analysis of token values held by the user uh, how many unibot uh, are in circulation so they actually break all this stuff down we're literally in one section which is great um, unibot was launched on the ethereum mainnet on may 17th 2023 with a million unibot tokens um created at genesis liquidity of 100 percent was added during the launch uh and the token burn rate is set to 0.1 percent per day that sounds interesting right there i'm always a fan of something like that uh who are the founders of unibot um i don't need to really know that <laughs> where can i buy unibot you can buy it on a lot of different exchanges as we just kind of looked at there so Interesting. That, that's definitely very, very interesting there. Uh, you probably have to look into it a little bit more to understand maybe a, a good portion of it as, as you look at like the website and a breakdown of not only uh, what it is, but you know, kind of examples going through it. <clears throat> so it, it looks very, very interesting, very, very promising. And I wish I would have um, you know, seen this before you know, somewhere around June, but you know, I, I, I didn't. So right now I'm not saying that, you know, this price point is, that's the highest point that it can get to. Obviously we've seen a higher point. Um, I'm kind of, I guess, looking for a further retracement here because we're not seeing the most positive market overall. So I'm looking for a further retracement here and, you know, probably looking for something under a hundred if we were going to purchase anything. Um, and then if it does find a way to climb down even more, um, that's where, you know, dollar cost average in is always an option. So it looks interesting. It looks very, very interesting. Guys, we have 72 people here. Make sure you guys hit the like button. Um, uh, we have 49 likes, which is not bad. So I'll take that any day of the week. <clears throat> What's happening with Elmo? What is going on with Elmo? Uh, let's see if anything notable is going on with elmo so uh currently <clears throat> let's go ahead and look at let's go ahead and look at uh elmo i guess break this down a little bit and see what's happening not only um actually let me go to twitter or x um and i'm gonna type in elmo and i want to see what they have um going on on twitter as well <clears throat> so uh, let's see, so give me a second. Let me remember, I always have clips, right? So which one was that? Unibot. And we'll probably put that clip over on the, um, 
the clips channel if you guys are interested in seeing that full breakdown if you didn't um if you missed any part of this live stream if you're just joining right now which is 15 minutes if you missed any part of this live stream um i will find a way to upload the clips onto my clips channel which um you'll be able to find should be in the description <clears throat> Um, anyways, let's look at Elmo and see what's happening today because, again, this is a position that I'm I'm strong in and the reason why I, I like it so much is because it has a concept that I kind of adore, right? Uh, Elmo ERC is a position that is a hyper-deflationary position and a truly hyper-deflationary position where they are burning um, a lot of the supply through a uh, sell tax and no buy tax, just through a sell tax. So as you see, you know, sell volume, you know that there is uh, increased value in what you're holding, right? An increased ceiling in what you're holding. Now, currently we're seeing Elmo that's down by 12%. It's down by 12.2% down to 58% of a penny. Um, that's not good to see, right? Seeing it consistently uh, fall like it has been is not good to see at all. Um, as you know, I'm holding 220,000 um, Elmo tokens. And with the burns that happen consistently, you would think that it creates that that strength, right? Um, however, you did have, you know, an airdrop to 1,000 people. And when you have that airdrop to 1,000 people, when, when people see things that are, you know, decreasing in price, um, they may get scared of what they were given. So they'll end up selling that, right? So... Airdrops, in my opinion, n never really go over well. They go over well in the beginning because it creates interest or people that are like, oh, well, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of it. I want to hold Elmo beforehand. And I want to be airdropped Elmo um, or airdropped whatever. But they they always lead to a larger sell-off. <clears throat> and the reason why they lead to a, a larger sell-off is because people are getting something free. And when you're getting something free, they want to convert it directly to cash. So that's like me giving you something that's worth, or let's say, that's like everybody being a pawn shop where uh, I'm selling, let's say, an expensive item to you guys. Most likely, you're looking to just completely turn it for a profit. It's not about um, you know, holding its value and holding it for a long time, it's, it's, uh, turning a profit right away because it's worth, uh, uh, let's say a hundred dollars, $200, whatever you want to take that $200 and you want to use it, um, rather than have it decrease in value or potentially decrease in value. But then you can also see a potential gain in value, but they'd rather, you know, not go with that. So that was, I think kind of the issue there a little bit, yes, airdrop creates interest, but it's also going to create, you know, selling that happens, which means we're going to see more burns. Um, now, uh, again, they're on a bunch of different markets, LBank, BitMart, uh, BitForex, CoinW, all of that. Um, you're also seeing, you know, a about $700,000 worth of volume, which is down by 20% because we saw it at a million uh, or so. <clears throat> Um, market cap at a $1.8 million market cap, which is way lower than where it has been. You know, seeing that at a $10, $12 million market cap was fantastic. Seeing this at a three cent price was fantastic. But again, um, not seeing the most positive time in the market. I think, I think today is kind of positive. Um, but also having the holders. Let's see if you still have the same amount of holders. So yeah, instead of being at, I believe they were at 3,500 holders. And now you're seeing this at 3,300 holders. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's where they were. And you're seeing, you know, 200, almost 200 less holders. Uh, so that's definitely a, a little bit of an issue that's there. But either way, you see the supply. Supply is at 360 million. It was at 361 million. And now we're under that 361 uh, million and we're at 360. 0.5 uh, million so it's burning off consistently and as we see more cells that are going through you have more burns so uh, just to give you another snippet of i guess what they burn in the last 24 hours if you go over to elmo uh, website you're going to see in the last 24 hours uh, they burned uh, 492,000, or in the last seven days 1.2 million so again consistently burning and i'm all for it as they get listed on other exchanges, I'm all for it. So that's a breakdown on Elmo. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed that. But 
I know some people are probably like, ah, my Elmo is not really worth as much. My Elmo is not really worth as much either. It was it was worth about five five thousand dollars, and now it's worth somewhere around a thousand, you know, plus. So it's down significantly, but it also creates a lot of potential for the future as long as they get through this consolidation period as well as more of a, a crash for Elmo ERC, um, which I think they can get through it. It's just going to take some time. It's going to take some, um, you know, hopefully some listing on uh, some exchanges and, you know, consistency, staying with the program, right? So we will see. Uh, let me go back here. Sorry. I'm trying to bring this back. Bring this back to earth. <clears throat> All right. We currently stand at 77 people that are watching, 66 likes. Thank you for, for being here, everybody that is here. Matt loves burning. I do love burning because it is the complete opposite, right, of what uh, CEXs do, right? Or sorry, not CEXs, normal projects do. Because normal projects, right, um, you know, early projects, you'll see a lot of them that are either minting or just you know, um, mining or just adding coins from a, an escrow. It's all about adding, right? It's all about diluting the position, but we've never seen the reverse, right? And nothing that was completely established on a lot of exchanges. So if you can see that first one, it opens up the door for the next one and the next one and the next one. It's just like uh, kind of seeing an algorithmic stable coin. Those may not work, right? The smaller ones may not work. And then it, uh, bigger ones didn't work. And then obviously the largest one, seeing Terra Luna Classic and UST not work. You learn from those situations and you can establish something that, that does work. Hopefully that also comes with USTC by getting that, that full breakdown of what didn't work with it and finding a way to make it work. Um, same thing goes for, for burning, right? If we're trying to establish things on CEXs and uh, CEXs then start burning and they start uh, establishing that tax and it actually starts working, um, then you open up the door for a lot of other ones that can also decrease their supply and create a better value without having to just add to LP. You have the standard transactions that's happening. Um, yes, you'll have your LP that's out there, but your standard transactions also strengthen the project by taking away from the coins that are in circulation and making the LP stronger, right? Um, because the LP may be at a certain point. Let's say you have uh, you know, 10% or 20% of the, the uh, LP or 20% of the supply that's in uh, you know, uh, LP. Um, well, as you have 80% that's out there, let's say you decrease that 80% down to um, you know, 50% or something. That makes the LP a lot stronger because it's now uh, you're now holding a lot more within you know the LP. So it's not strengthening the LP by just adding to it. It's strengthening it by decreasing what's available to people, right? Um, so it's very very interesting. It makes it interesting. Hey Matt, five hundred on on Hex. It's uh, it's lowest. Wait, so you're you're buying hex you have 500 on hex 500 dollars or 500 hex i don't know how much it's worth right now um let's hit it like we tried to hit lunic uh i can't say i'm the uh, hex fan um i wonder why we haven't seen elmo's uh bitmart burn um so elmo i believe has had um a lot of volume that has gone through bitmart the, the issue is that they're not advertising these burns and how much they have in, um, in like, I wouldn't say reserve, but let's just call it a reserve. How much they have in reserve for all of these different exchanges. We want to see. I, I can definitely say that that would make things a lot stronger um, by having transparency everywhere. I think that they have been transparent in how much they're burning you know, per day. But when it comes to how much you receive, you know, from BitMart or how much you receive from L Bank or how much you receive from another place. Um, you want to see the reserves of all of those so that you can see what you're going to burn. 
And even if there's a hold period to where you're not burning all of it right away, uh, you may be burning a certain certain portion so you always have consistent burns. I'm not 100% sure. But if you do uh, have that full breakdown, that would be great for a lot of people. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm holding Elmo, but despite... Despite the burning, my value is way down. Richie's Game Talk donated $20 through Super Chat. It would be awesome if Elmo landed a big exchange. It's not like Lunk. Every exchange is burning the same amount. Yeah, that's 100% true. Thank you for the Super Chat, by the way, uh, Richie's Plain Talk. I appreciate that a lot. Um, you're absolutely right. It would be awesome if uh, Elmo landed a, a huge exchange, but I think... What, they're, what those huge exchanges are doing is they're trying to understand if the concept is gonna work and what ELMO really stands for. <clears throat> as you gain in popularity, as you gain in volume and you gain in a market cap, that's when they, they look at you and go, okay, we can approve that. I believe ELMO has the money to list. It's just whether they are approved to list, right? So uh, I'm not sure how much it costs for something like a Coinbase or like a, um, a KuCoin or whatever. Um, but I'm sure it's somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars, if not more than that, it's gotta be a decent amount to list on these places. Now, if you're a, a cryptocurrency project that just has a ton of popularity and would be very beneficial for the exchange to have, that's where the exchange just takes that leap and purchases the cryptocurrency, um, and then lists it on their platform. But a lot of times they're being paid to list um certain projects and that's why these cryptocurrency uh exchanges survive for so long right you have these these smaller coins that are paying you in order to do that so your revenue is looking absolutely amazing and then also the fees that are going through revenue is looking absolutely amazing what's crazy is um it doesn't really cost them anything to move anything around like for coinbase it doesn't really cost them anything to to trade anything let's say um, they have pairings of USTC to whatever position. It literally costs them nothing because they hold it and it's like they are kind of the, the wallet, right? Yes, it would, it would cost an amount to send it somewhere. So that's where you do have, you know, uh, maybe a heftier fee or the fee comes in handy or um, the difference between all the fees come in handy there because if you have zero um expense that you have to pay and you get nothing but revenue from that then any other time you're sending out you can still charge the same amount uh, no matter what you're sending to um but anyways um when it comes to elmo if they could find a way to list on a uh, kucoin or a coinbase or mexc or and i feel like you know there's so many what tier one exchanges and I, I would just love to see them listed on there and actually have the tax as well. I'm sure that those exchanges would probably say, you know, whatever BitMart is doing, the, the like 6% or something would be the level that they would be at. But I, I would be cool with that, right? It's still burning something. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to see 1%, but, you know, just can, just keep the, the burning that's happening. Anyways, thank you for that super chat. Uh, I appreciate that. I always love the the text to speech it's just just great uh top of the morning mr p um currency difference uh usd one usd for 1.5 cad uh, Binance is backing Lunik for, for a reason. They also haven't sold their bag till now. Uh, they do, they do burn Lunik, uh, as they, the only coin they burn. That's what I'm saying. And people always look at them. They look at, um, <clears throat> they looked at a lot of exchanges or they have an opinion saying that burning is not the way when CZ has, has proven that you know, all you have to do is reach out to these exchanges, tell them, you know, how they would benefit from it, get them on board. And if you get them on board, well, now we can see Lunik that's burning and he supports it, right? He already showed that he supports it in doing, you know, any type of burns. He didn't want to burn down his entire supply because that dilutes his own position as the largest holders. Thank you for subscribing, um, Edo. Edo? 
Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. I don't know why the sub goal is not going up, but I do appreciate you uh, subscribing, though. Um, so, yeah, um, CZ definitely supports Burns. He supports Burns in his own, uh, you know, cryptocurrency, BNB, as well as Terra Luna Classic. And those are the only two that he does Burns for. One is a quarterly burn, you know, which is BNB. And, you know, the other one, you know, Terra Luna Classic, just to support the community and support the overall concept of uh, recovering USTC and Terra Luna Classic. And there's a, a huge issue um, with the fact that we, we are, are saying that he doesn't support Burns when he obviously does support Burns. It's, it's been proven. Do I like Quant? Yes, I do like Quant. I, I had Quant before. I don't have it now, uh, but I did have it. I only had two. But I missed my buying point for Quant, so I didn't end up purchasing after that. Cashless Society is around the corner. Another uh, prophecy being fulfilled uh, with the Holy Bible. Uh, get right with Jesus. Quant. Um, do your own research. Uh, he totally likes Quant. I do like Quant, yes. Um, okay, I got you. I'm not... I'm not a Hex fan either, but if it drops like Lunik did, uh, I'm going to get uh, it at its lowest. That's not a bad idea, but you want to make sure that it does have the hype to kind of push it up after that, which typically you see drops um, and, you know, you do see that hype that builds up as it starts to get to the low. But the issue is where is the low? That's, that's going to be the issue. Where's the lowest point? Because I sort of had trouble with the lowest point with uh terra luna classic seeing it at you know what was it uh two dollars and then one dollar and then um like multiple cents and then it dropped down to even lower to where it had six zeros and um you know that's where you have that struggle where do you purchase or where do you sell um where do you gain like all that other type of stuff so my last purchase um was at the the area where i can gain i spent 43 dollars and bought um 63 million I think it was 65 million. I can't remember the amount now. Richard's just awesome. He is awesome. Absolutely awesome. He got like a, a billion cases on him uh, right now, though. Uh, I don't know. I don't think anything will happen to him. What are we talking about? Uh, he's extremely intelligent. Who, Richard? Thank you for subscribing, Little Horn. Let's scroll down here. Uh, XRP to 90 cents this week, uh, possible. Is it possible? I mean, this is the thing. It's like, yes, these things are possible. But the problem is, is that we don't know where the crypto market is going on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so, like, flat. And um, it's, like, up 1%, down 1%, up 2%, down 2%. It's, like, staying in the same area unless something big happens. And then when something big happens, it gets to a $1.3 trillion market cap and then decreases back down to its normal state. So hit up the like as you enter the chat. Standard practice audience. Uh, show some love. Changing the space for the better. Yeah, would love that. Thank you. We do have 86 likes. So we're almost at 100 likes and we're 33 minutes into the live stream. So I appreciate you guys for being here. This is a great, uh, great group of people that's that's uh, here today. A lot of a lot of the same, you know, seeing uh, a lot of members and uh, moderators and and uh, subscribers. Um, so I appreciate you. Peace and happiness. Well, thank you for one spreading peace and happiness. And then also, you know, being a subscriber it means a lot. Read above, Matt. Sometimes I, I have to skip sometimes because it's, it's a lot. Um, especially when I go into rants to where I'm talking about certain things. But let's let's talk about this article, right? There's a there's an article talking about Ripple unveiling, you know, a lot. And that's kind of what this live stream, I guess the title is all about. But I also have some other some other things that we kind of want to go through and see uh what's happening there. But um you know, Ripple, I just saw something um, recently that talked about 
um, you know, Ripple and, and going through, I guess, employees holdings for the SEC of, uh, you know, what they're holding of, you know, XRP and everything. Um, but this is an article talking about Ripple unveiling its its total XRP holdings and breaking that all down, kind of letting everyone know absolutely everything. So American blockchain payment firm Ripple Labs uh, Inc. has released its second quarter performance report showing the total number of XRP coins um, it has in its uh, coffers, coffers, coffers. I've never seen that word uh, as the. Uh, the company revealed its uh, ownership of uh, XRP falls within two broad categories, including the XRP and escrow and those in currently uh, it currently holds as a firm. Uh, as as of the end of the second quarter in June, the Brad Garlinghouse led company said the total XRP subject to on ledger escrow uh, is pegged at uh, 41.9 billion, while the total XRP is it holds uh, as a company at the time was pegged at 5.5 billion yeah 5.5 uh, billion um this figure compares to the the escrow bound uh xrp as of the end of the first quarter in march which comes in at 42.8 billion um that's there the difference is accounted uh for um sorry for by the the more than by the more than one billion XRP tokens released from uh, escrow in in that quarter. However, the company grew its total XRP holdings uh, as the second quarter figures are a slight step up from the 5.5 billion it said to hold at the end of the first quarter. Uh, the XRP coins in escrow XRP coins in es escrow are fixed are on a fixed schedule to be released over the next 42 months as it seeks to boost operations on the XRPL and um, other areas in its operations. Uh, Ripple debunks mis misconceptions in the XRP ruling, just a little bit. In addition to transparency with respect uh, to XRP holdings, Ripple has also debunked some of the misconceptions, misconceptions in the community with respect to uh recent xrp ruling that's happening there uh according to ripple the ruling shows that xrp uh in itself is not a security and it stands um a, a stance it noted um it noted it at, has maintained since the the start of the lawsuit to date the firm noted that the the ruling has notably set a precedent for the crypto industry. Another important clarification it made um, is that XRP ruling protects every class of investor associated with Ripple Labs, including both retail and institutional investors. Um, and so, I mean, that's just a little a little snippet of um, a breakdown, I guess, of what Ripple has has. Uh, is holding the, the whole xrp holdings which is a uh, great to know but it's not like breaking news or anything um it's not something that absolutely changes the game but does give you an understanding of what ripple is doing as a whole and what they're holding as a whole it's an old-timey way of basically saying uh in their hands thank you for letting me know how do you say it coffers 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 old timey way coffer it's a coffer something that i'm doing because i'm coughing no that's not the right a a strong box or small chest for holding valuables a recess panel um in a ceiling I mean, those are the only two definitions that I see. But whatever. Brand new word. Um, yeah, guys, we're almost at 100 likes. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, Jasmine dumps on every on everyone. How's our girl Jasmine doing today? Um, let's take a second to, to look at what's happening with Jasmine.
Uh, Jasmine Bitcoin is just down by 1%. Um, we are seeing the volume that's up by 45%. That's very, very interesting. I'll probably have to uh, look at that. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll probably have to take a closer look at that and maybe make a video just on Jasmine volume because it's always great to have a decent amount of volume. Thank you, everybody, for, for becoming a member. Actually, um, thank you, Richie's Plain Talk, for the um, gifted memberships. And you're going to see those come in for probably the next, I don't know, however many minutes. <laughs> Maybe like a minute or two as it goes one by one by one. Uh, let's see. Let's let's answer some Twitch questions as well. Um, good morning, Matt. What's up with uh, Shiba Doge? The price is off. Uh, is real showing massive gains seems to be off to me. Um, so I don't know what's happening to to Shiba Doge. I've heard a couple of things, I guess, about this, but. I don't know what's happening to it. I'm not. Yeah, it says that it's up a crazy percentage right now. And it's up to a $5.1 trillion market cap. Like this. This has to be wrong. It says that it's up five point, um, up to a $5.1 trillion market cap, which would make the overall crypto market cap worth about um what six six trillion dollars right now that's insane so something has to be off with this something's not going right um with this position but apparently it's not a verified market cap because of the overall supply maybe you're seeing less supply that's out there in a certain price but you're not seeing an updated in that update in that supply so it's showing what the price is but it's not updating the supply on here so it's showing a way higher market cap um that's what I would assume. I don't know what's happening to it. It did have a massive spike to the overall price. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of zeros here. And I mean, there's also a lot of coins that are there too. So I don't know if something new has happened. Somebody is now what? Now following? Well, thank you for following over, I think on Twitch. Appreciate that. Is it Twitch or yeah, you must have followed on Twitch um, because I don't have an alert for kick. I only have alerts for Twitch and YouTube. So thank you guys for, for following and for uh, Richie's plain talk for the memberships. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, sorry, let me go back. When said something, and I can't remember where it was. Matt, I'm afraid that when Shibirium breaks, uh, SHIB will crash right after. Um, I've not seen uh, a lot of good projects built so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to say stuff like that. You know that my, my mindset and you know what I'm thinking about with uh, Shibirium is how it will briefly affect um shiba inu and bone it will have a longer standing effect with bone and then a short stand, a short effect with uh um shiba inu and the reason being is because i don't believe that there is a a large impact right or things that are being created on shibarium for ship right it's it's mainly the whole thing is mainly to push bone and everything that they're promoting is is bone related and that's not a bad thing for people that are holding bone and I think you are holding bone um but I encourage people as they see gains as they see things push you know take your profit um I don't think that Shib um you know Shiba Inu is you know depending on Shibirium to do anything I feel like Shiba Inu can do something itself because of the the holders 
um, that we have there, the 1.3 million holders within it, it's it's uh, that strength alone that really drives Shiba Inu. And it's also that strength that also kind of, uh, you know, transfers over to bone, bone holders. And, you know, if you're holding Shiba Inu, um, there's a, a good portion of Shiba Inu holders that are now holding bone, right? I believe they have what, like 50,000 holders or something. So that's something that does kind of get me worried uh, at times when I look into, um, when I look into Shiba Inu, right? Let's, let's look at SHIB. When I look at, um, back here, when I look at SHIB, um, you know, I understand that it does have um, a good amount of strength, again, with these holders here, 1.3 uh, million holders, and actually on its way to 1.4. So SHIB is very, very strong when it comes to the community. Then you go over here and you go to Bone, and Bone, the only reason why Bone has any strength at all is because of, one, the thought of Shibirium, and then also the Shiba Inu holders and the thought of the impact for Shibirium to impact Shiba Inu. So like if they're impacting Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu holders are going to be buying bone and moving bone. So they're like, all right, well, this is, this is exactly what's happening. So we see when we go into the holders here, you know, we have 83,000 holders that's there. I'm not holding bone, um, but you have 83,000 holders. And I would say 83,000 of those 83,000 holders are probably... <laughs> Um, uh, you know, associated with Shiba Inu in some way or were associated with Shiba Inu in some way. Uh, maybe they gave up on SHIB and they're pushing to Bone because of the massive push within the ecosystem dev team uh, to kind of put their focus on Bone. Um, but I'm definitely thinking about um, these two positions, Bone and SHIB, when um, Shibirium does get released how will that effect be? And that's what I kind of think about all the time. That's what makes me uh, more of a successful, you know, day trader and swing trader and, you know, all of that stuff, right? Not so much swing trade lately because of the markets that are down, but you typically have to assume what people are going to do. What's the mindset of every investor? And you have to think of what the uh, larger portion of that investor base will do. And if you're going to see, you know, people that, you know, buy this rumor, which they are buying this rumor, and you're seeing it, you know, climb up to $2 or so. Um, and then you end up seeing them, you know, sell the news, depending on when that that um, when they sell it, whether it's before or right during the, the launch. Um, I'm not so sure. So you have to predict on exactly what they're going to do. And if you can predict that the right way, I mean, you end up taking your profit at the right time. But that's the point is that I think, at some point, it's going to, you know, turn back where you see uh, bone start to retrace quite a bit from whatever the high point is going to be. So um, just be uh, weary of where you are. And if you have an ability to take profit at some point, um, take some of that profit and, um, you know, find those uh, retracement points and maybe reinvest if you see another opportunity. But that's, that's something that's definitely tricky. <clears throat> I'm way behind on, on messages, so I'm gonna skip forward. If I missed your message, it's so much easier. Honestly, I made, I made the uh, text-to-speech um, you know, two ninety nine dollars for a super chat to get uh, something through, especially if you have a, like if you want me to go over a certain project, I can definitely go over that project um, you know, easily, but you know, it's just so difficult to, to play catch up, especially when you go over breakdowns like that, what I just did. Um, blah, blah, blah. So I'm skipping all the way down to the bottom. Matt, I've been trying to show you something the SEC release. SEC charges Hex founder Richard Hart with um, misappropriating millions of dollars of an investor fund from unregistered crypto asset securities, offering that. <clears throat> raised more than one billion dollars offerings that raised more than one billion dollars uh that's interesting we're gonna have to so so what is happening to hex then um in from the investor side not like obviously i'm i'm reading what has happening what is happening but um you know 
thank you, uh, uh, DJ Trev, for putting that out there. But this is what um, they, they were referring to here. So SEC charged Hex founder Richard Hart with misappropriating millions of dollars of investor funds from unregistered crypto asset securities, offering that uh, offerings that raised more than one billion dollars. Uh, that's very very interesting. I'll have to um, give this a a read really quick. It's not it's not a long read, but I'll have to give it a read. Um, at some point, I do want to look at the more investor side of things, understand what is happening to Hex, because you would expect to see this uh, drop quite a bit. And it is down about 16%. So they're saying, uh, that's where you were saying, uh, when it does hit its lowest point, then you're going to buy into it. But the point is, is where is that lowest point, if that is going to happen. And also, um, as you go through this, right, you're, you're charging hex founder, um, with this, but this is not something that's 100% like confirmed that that was the case, right? Charging and leading and getting to an ultimate conclusion is completely different. Um, but if you do end up getting to that point, that's where things look, uh, you know, pretty, pretty sad for, for hex. If you look at the last seven days, it's down 46.7 or sorry, 47%. Um, in the last seven days, which is crazy. And seeing the um, overall volume that's uh, down 44%, you would expect to see higher volume as things are crashing. So that's very interesting. Texas Crypto um, donated $2.99 through Super Chat. Checking to see if the text to talk works, Grin. <laughs> it does work. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot because it gives me... Um, I don't have to go and, and search for the super chat anywhere. I can, you know, just uh, listen out and I don't have to search for that. I don't have to search for, um, you know, any of the other messages there. And if people want me to go over something, we can always go over something easily that way. Thank you for that super chat, by the way. I appreciate it a lot. Because uh, remember, the two, I made it to where it it's like, it's below five dollars because five dollars shows up as like a bigger uh, spot and you can click on it and see the the super chat there but when it's lower than five dollars um you know you can you can get a, a listen on the breakdown here because it only shows up in the chat so if you guys are starting to create content that's what you'll get <laughs> um but yeah uh hex as we look at that, it's down 47%. We'll have to take a deeper dive into that. Maybe uh, go into, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll put it on my list, but I'm not sure that it will fit what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to go over. But we'll, we'll see. I'll try and make something out of it. I don't know what to put, so I'll just put that. <clears throat> um, let's go back here. Yeah, so uh, Bald is another one which uh, went down. I did see that. Um, I didn't like Hex even before launch. Yeah, I've I've never really been a Hex fan. People have tried to sell me on it. I just haven't I haven't been a fan. Uh one of the wallets was even involved in the USTC crash. Seems like we just we just go full circle with, with stuff like this. You know, SBF, um you know, um uh, the USTC crash, Terra Luna crash, crash. Uh just goes full circle here. Uh I don't know how to say it. Was a Aru ba bas Basu? Um, yeah, I know you get the, he gets the credit. Thank you for saying that, DJ Trev, uh, for uh, breaking that down. But we may have a video out of that. Um, so if you like Hex, you know, hopefully I, 
you know, maybe look forward to a video there, but hopefully I, I make a video on that. Uh, Litecoin having in three hours. It doesn't seem like we're seeing any type of um, uh, push to that. <clears throat> Maybe we'll have to make a, a video on that. There's, there's, there's kind of a uh, low key, a lot of stuff happening right now. <sighs> I'm tired. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely different from what uh, Lunik did, but I'm, I'm paying as much, um, as much attention to it as I can. Yeah, I mean, if, if things do drop quite a bit, then yeah, that definitely makes sense to do so because anything that does drop a hell of a lot always has a decent sized push to it. But again, I if I didn't believe in Hex, you know, beforehand, um, then it, 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 it I kind of struggle believing in it now. You know, even if it does drop a significant amount, it, it's kind of difficult. For Terra Luna Classic, uh, or Terra Luna at the time, I, you know, believed in the concept and believed in the investor side of things. You saw, you know, uh, what was it, $40 billion market cap. The only reason I didn't invest into it because I felt like it wasn't enough of a return at that point. You know, even if it does go to $100 billion, you know, and resist from $100 billion market cap, what do I gain out of it? You know, I gain, um, you know, a 2x, maybe get it to a 3x return when there's so many other opportunities. So the only time that made me very interested was when it decreased a hell of a lot um, because I understood that that concept could remain the same. Um, but if we find a way to decrease this supply, um, then we can see it right back up to where it was. And now I'm looking at instead of a, um, a $100 million market cap or sorry, a $40 billion market cap to a $100 billion market cap, I can look to a $100 million market cap to a $100 billion market cap. And that's the range that you have. And you're like, okay, this is a large bit of growth here. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the LTC having, uh, planning on scooping 500 worth, uh, hoping to catch close to the bottom. <clears throat> uh, this, this all bottom, wait, this all bottom. What does that mean? Though? I don't know whether you should get out of hex or get in. Cause Richard is, is a very intelligent guy. Uh, he could bring it back, but that's a gamble. I mean, you look at it and you're like, he seems he's an intelligent guy, but as you see the sec who's kind of, they're just claiming everything at this point and, um, you know, have tons of allegations on, you know, crypto exchanges and different crypto projects and everything everywhere. Um, you know, it, it could be more of the same, right? And if it is something you don't really know, um, what's, what's true and what's not right. So from history, he's an intelligent guy, but doing the same thing, if these allegations are more true than, than anything, which for the SEC and in, in most of their cases, it's not. Right? Uh, a bone is $2.20 Canadian right now. That's good. There's very little bone. Um, a a dev have been paid in there is very little bone a d devs uh the devs have been paid in <coughs> i thought most of them were paid in or given bone a lot of car cars watches and property for richard Uh, don't walk, run from Hex. 
<laughs> All right. Um, do we have anything else that we want to talk about today? Let's see. I want to hit the um, monetization button real quick. Thank you again. Thank you guys for being here. We have, uh, it says we have about 600 views right, on the total live stream, but we have 98 people that are watching. We have 128 likes, which is fantastic. Like the, the like to view ratio is definitely at a higher point, And I appreciate you guys for hitting the like button. So thank you a lot. And we're an hour in, I would, I would love to see a lot more views an hour in, but you know, I, I appreciate you guys for being here. I appreciate all the super chats and the, the gifted memberships and, and all that stuff. So <clears throat> Um, let's see if there's anything else, um, right now to kind of talk about. And this sounds, um, interesting here, but there's always someone that, that goes from, you know, maybe rags to riches in certain, uh, positions. And I don't know who's making this money, but if we look at this, um, you know, CoinDesk article from a couple of days ago, somebody mentioned the bald, um, meme coin. Um, so Trader, I don't know if it was a meme coin, honestly. Uh, trader turns $500 into, uh, into a million dollar fortune with bald meme coin uh, on Coinbase's blockchain. Uh, uh, meme coin frenzy has assured uh, or ensued, ensued on Coinbase's layer two blockchain, um, even as the network is not officially live yet. Um, the lack of uh, two day tokens. Uh, two-way token bridge a clunky decentralized exchange experience and a network being closed to the public have not uh, deterred crypto traders from finding their way um, to coinbase's layer two blockchain uh, in the hopes of uh, unearthing a fortune um, uh, base built by uh, crypto exchange coinbase on uh, op stack <clears throat> Um, launched its testnet in January and opened uh, to builders in mid-July. Um, basis the uh, basis the uh, submission of the application to base. Um, uh, traction was uh, scant so far. Uh, has only a few DEXs went live on base. Okay, I'm trying to get to the the, the good portion of it, right? Uh, Todd Shift is a Saturday a crypto uh, Twitter user cheat coiner uh, seemed to first tweet about uh, meme coin bald um, funded by Coinbase uh, staked Ether um, CB ETH on base network stating they they picked up 2% of the supply um, such tweets are commonly known as calls uh, most uh, mostly made up of influencers hyping up uh, tokens only to dump them on unexpecting followers uh, at higher prices. The use, uh, the use of CB ETH uh, quickly gave rise to speculative among, um, among crypto trading uh, circles <clears throat> about the token uh, likely created being uh, issued by someone at Coinbase. Uh, bought 2% under 50k market cap you're always trying to find those diamonds in the rough type of thing and if you can find those diamonds in the rough you can make so much money out of it um i mean that's just some people um what followed was a bull market speed run in less than six hours bald token amassed a 50 million dollar market capitalization uh, as the popular uh, as their popularity picked up among trading circles, uh, it ran up to $85 million uh, market capitalization um, late on Sunday, uh, netting cheat coiner over $1.4 million from the initial 500 investment. Uh, from, uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I gotta bite my eye. My eye is like bothering me at this point. From ensuance to peak, uh, the price rise was uh, about 4 million percent surge. That is insane. Uh, and the people legitimately asked us why, why we're in this space sometimes. Yeah, I mean, 
some people can make these uh, if you can find those those plays and i don't even know um it was it confirmed that um you know this person coin what was it coin or cheat coiner made the 1.4 million dollars was that confirmed uh by cheat coiner in any any place <clears throat> um so ball market uh liquidity quickly uh piled on as developers of bald token kept adding more uh, ether to liquidity pool uh, that traded bald against ether um as of monday the trading pair holds uh over 32 million dollars in liquidity and has surpassed 100 million dollars in volumes <clears throat> uh, as such cheat coiner uh wasn't the only lottery winner i guess he was uh blockchain uh sleuth um looking on chain said uh, Monday that four crypto wallet addresses uh, transferred a cumulative cumulative of uh, 0.53 ether or just over uh, one it's supposed to be one thousand dollars I guess to buy 50 million uh, bald with within four minutes of the token uh, issuance um, these uh, addresses likely sorry uh, these addresses likely inside our wallets connected to the developer uh sold 37 million bald for uh 554 ether as trading volumes picked up netting 1 million dollars in less than a day that's insane i mean those are plays that people would love uh love to get just regular people would love to get um and it's so hard to find those because there are so many people that are pushing for a certain position right some that have more uh promise than others um, but there's so many people that are pushing for certain positions like, hey, this next uh, next position is going to run, whether it's Pepe one, two, three or whatever. People are making so much money out of these plays by investing in them at the um, the lowest time or the beginning of when, you know, it, it gets launched or um, a low time in the market. And it, it's so difficult, like even even with uh, Terra Luna Classic, I could have gained, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars within a day honestly or multiple actually it might have been a week but i could have gained uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars if not a million dollars in that short period of time now granted i'm a person that takes profit so i probably would have taken a decent amount of profit as time went on um but you would have seen me hold quite a bit it would have been something where instead of me profiting um you know 4800 i would have profited probably forty eight thousand dollars from it and probably still have been holding you know somewhere around let's say fifty thousand dollars worth um even though it got up to probably three hundred thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars or whatever i would have been able to you know do the same concept but just at a larger scale that makes sense um but yeah that's that's insane everybody wants to find those next plays to do what what that has done and there are a lot out there it's just you have to find the right one and how do we do that research to always land us on that uh that play you, you can't really 100 percent confirm that that strategy you know Um, <clears throat> let's see what's what's happening right now 139 likes we're at 100 i appreciate you guys for being here i think this is a, a really good live stream not the best live stream that we've seen like in the last month but definitely a good live stream so i appreciate you guys um if this trial is concluded before 24 uh election it will also be the the outcome of the of the presidency. Um, if Trump wins uh, the case, he he wins the office. Um, he's convicted. He's not eligible. <clears throat> I I just want to see someone young in in office. Honestly, I want I want to see somebody that may be. Uh, this is this is the issue. I feel like with both both sides, you really you lose one thing and you gain something, um, you know, gain something else. 
that's just how how things work right um you know with uh with the republican side i feel like you gain a lot with businesses um with the democratic side i feel like you gain a lot with people but you can't have both right if you want record profits and you want a strong you know country i guess you would have to see the strength in the businesses but you can't really have kind of both and that's why it kind of goes back and forth and you know you have that um you know ability to see you know the success in people and then see the success in the business and see the success in people and see the success in the business and it goes back and forth and back and forth and it's just it's honestly tiring, but I know that you can't really see the the drive and the money go to both places because if you do, then we're kind of in the middle, right? Everywhere. So I, I don't know. I really don't know. That's why I'm not, you know, in politics. That's why I'm not in, um, uh, you know, I'm pro good ideas, but the issue is that what's a good idea at the time do we care more about people we care about more about businesses we should care about both but again it doesn't work that way <clears throat> uh sorry i was having dinner and and didn't join the stream earlier um dinner where where are you located jonathan Because. It's 8 a.m. for me over here. <laughs> um, what's going on, Matt? What's what's hot? Um, it looks like right now Caspa is actually moving quite a bit. So uh, one of the positions, if I go into to what's trending right now, if we go into kind of a breakdown of the market, right? And this is as of um, you know 8 10 a.m. Just to break this down because you know we're gonna have the video that's posted on the Clips channel um, as of 8 10. <clears throat> <coughs> that was weird uh, as of 8 10 a.m this is where we stand within the crypto market so if we look at um the overall market we're up about 1.16 percent um at a 1.18 uh, trillion dollar market cap bitcoin's dominance is still sitting around the 48 percent um level we want to see that a lot lower i know some people want to see it higher but we want to see it lower to show that altcoins are rising up and are capturing a lot of you know that market cap there and a lot of the dominance there obviously ethereum and bitcoin are going to hold quite a bit but we want to see you know more altcoins that are you know driving that and and holding a little bit more value whether it's you know hundreds of billions or or you know tens of billions or whatever um so that's where we stand with the overall market cap. If we look into where Bitcoin is, uh, Bitcoin's currently um, up about 2.5% in the last 24 hours. The last seven days up about 1.3%. Ethereum is up 1.5%. XRP is up 1.2%, um, but is down slightly in the last seven days. So kind of flat. Um, seeing Cardano, that's up 2% in the last seven days, 1% today up to about a 31 cent price. That's kind of been hovering around the same spot for a while. Um, anything that's kind of notable here, Shiba Inu is up 6% in the last seven days, maybe getting closer and closer to Shibarium. So you see a little bit more, a little bit more attention, <clears throat> um, but still is at that added zero, right? You have five zeros here rather than four, um, but slightly up on the day, more flat on the 24 hour um, you know, push. Uh, now we scroll down here, get to Cosmos. Cosmos is up about 1.6%. That's another position that I hold. Um, uh, Mantle, I've never heard of that. Uh, M MNT, I have to take a look into that a little bit more. HBAR is up by 5%. Let's look at things that are up in the top 100, the highest. So we're going to see um, XDC, that's up about 14% uh, or 22% in the last seven days, obviously seeing bone up 32% in the last seven days and how much hype it has behind Shibirium there. Maker is up um, uh, about 8%. Uh, I want to see how that has climbed recently. I'll definitely check that out in maybe a, um, a future state. I'm also seeing Gala that's up about 4%, 4.7%. Uh, and uh, seeing the last seven days of about 2% that it is up. Um, I also want to go into what's trending at the moment. So what's currently trending for, um, cryptocurrency. And if we go in here, we're going to see that Caspa is number two 
it's up about 10.23% in the last seven days. Or, um, you know, seeing that up um, 78%. Richie's Plain Talk donated $10 through Super Chat. Do you think SBF rugged us again? Do I think SBF rugged us again when it comes to bald? I'm, I don't believe that that's, so I haven't checked in enough about that. Um, but I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I want to say, I don't think so because I want to believe in people and the growth in people, but I would have to check into that detail a little bit more. Give me a couple minutes and we'll kind of dive into maybe some, some more stuff here and see if we could find anything on that. Um, but let me know your opinion before I, I finish this, this overall trending um, here. Um, let me know your opinion and we'll definitely go into a little bit more detail that's there. So, um, so CASPA again is up about 10% um, in the last seven days or 78% in the last 38 uh, or in the last 30 days, 78% in the last 30 days, 10% in the last seven days and about 8% uh, in the last 24 hours. So this has been kind of moving. I know people are big fans of CASPA seeing that at, you know, an $833 million market cap and at about four cents. So this has climbed quite a bit. Um, and I know there are some big fans that are, that are, um, you know, huge fans of CASPA. And as you see it at a lower point of 34 uh, cents, or we go the last month and how this has climbed from a level of two cents all the way up to four cents. I mean, it has consistently moved up, which is great to see. Um, so keep your eye out on things that are trending. I mean, one big one obviously is Caspa. Also seeing some things about WorldCoin recently. Um, you know, I guess like being banned in a certain place. I can't remember exactly where it is, but yeah. <clears throat> so, and then Bald is also, was also trending a hell of a lot and saw this up to a way higher point. But uh, self-reported market cap, the coin market cap team has not verified the project market. We'll have to look into that a little bit more. So either way, things are trending. Market looks slightly up, but sort of flat at the moment. So uh, that's your update for you know, eight o'clock, eight ten to eight fifteen or so. <clears throat> uh okay, that's super annoying and and evasive. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate what you're doing here. The the um the text to to, to speech, I like it. I like it a lot. Cause if I don't see the super chat, it comes up. And then, you know, um, it'll speak, which is always great. Um, but anyways, um, I believe this was the position that people are saying that, you know, got, got rugged, right? It was seeing $1 million worth of volume. The volume is down by 96%. Um, and seeing the current price or seeing the current market cap at a $6.4 million market cap. We saw this at a way higher price. And all of a sudden, just tanked. So if we look at the last um, few days, from two cents all the way down to a level of uh, twenty-five percent of a penny, um, and so people, I guess, made money from this overall position. Uh, I want to look at the market cap. Oh, it's not going to give me the market cap. So, are people saying that SPF? Uh, Is Sam Bankman Freed uh, tied to the new um, parent crypto scam called Bald? <clears throat> so, this is what you're talking about. Where um, this was yesterday. This is a breakdown from yesterday. Um, so, CoinDesk here is Sam Bankman Freed tied to a, a new apparent crypto scam called Bald? Um, so a, a rug pulling of, of short-lived, heavily hyped meme coin bald uh, has a, a whole cast of characters, but is, is one of them Sam Bankman Freed. On-chain data suggests uh, interactions between the meme coin bald de bald's deployer <clears throat> contract and one of the wallets tagged by uh, Nasons um, in the belonging to Alameda Research. The... The trading company founded 
um, and controlled by uh, Bankman Freed. The data was cited by uh, several blockchain sleuths on on uh, social media platforms formerly known as Twitter and later validated by uh, CoinDesk. Um, Wintermutes, uh, head of research, um, I don't know how to say your name, uh, tied to another address uh, or wallet address to uh, Alameda, uh, stating its owner showed strong technical capabilities um, and proved to be a, a savvy DeFi user. Trading on the first version of DYDX and o Oasis, um, as well as voting on the first uh, proposal from SushiSwap. Uh, the wallet was seemingly active on crypto exchange exchanges, Binance, FTX, Coinbase um, in that period um, and was a heavy DeFi user farming millions of dollars on early DeFi projects such as Urine Finance and Cream. What cream is, but cream. Uh, however, um, it stated that uh, while the the action seemed to be um, definitely someone from Alameda, it was unlikely to be uh, Bankman Freed himself. <clears throat> um, given the track record and the lack of uh, contact with other players, uh, interacted with uh, BlockFi Genesis, and then. Uh, we can point a finger towards someone from Alameda, he tweeted, and let's try to answer uh, probably the most critical question, Sam Bankman fried or Sam who? I don't know who that is. So I guess uh, unlikely to be, let's just break, uh, go down to this, unlikely to be Sam Bankman fried However, uh, while the on-chain evidence is, is skewed towards uh, suggesting that Alameda controlled the wallets, um, has interacted with the, the wallet used um, as a contract deployer. It is unlikely that uh, disgraced FTX founder Sam Bankman fried is behind it. Um, as some on social media app X speculated uh, as of Tuesday morning. As a part, I feel like a lot of people, whenever something does happen, they always push to Sam Bankman fried being a, a, an issue there. Oh, there's a super chat here. See, two ninety nine. I would have been that would have been red. Uh, so I'll I'll go into that in like two seconds. So give me a second. I'm I'm sorry. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Um, as a part of his um, uh, his bail conditions, uh, Bankman Freed uh, access to the internet is heavily controlled and restricted to a selection of uh, new sports and educational websites. Bankman Freed's parents uh, signed a affidavit stipulating they. Uh, would install monitoring software to restrict his access to the internet via their home connection. The former FTX uh, executive is restricted to uh, using a, a flip phone. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't stop any type of connection. I, I don't know. I, I can't say just because he doesn't have access to the internet, he can't, it can't be Sam Bankman fried um, But you do have a lot of you know speculation that always goes into something like this, so it definitely could be right. If there is a necessity in, in money, I mean, there can always be um, back roads that you take. He has a ton of connections. There can always be back roads in in uh, who controls and where that money goes and what they're doing with that. Um, so, I mean, it's quite possible. I don't know. I don't really like too many conspiracies, um, but. I'm I'm also a person that still lives with the fact that hedge funds are heavily shorting AMC and you know still living on that um that hill right there. So um yeah, I guess you can call that a conspiracy or backed by facts, but still more um speculation I guess than anything. And you're seeing kind of the same thing here. Is um uh, a lot of speculation, but it definitely could be true and it's believable. So <clears throat> anyways, that's bald for you. Let me up this, we'll go back here. So again, thank you for that super chat, by the way. Um, 
where, sorry, where do you see bone heading after Shibirium drops? So I kind of got, uh, went over this a little bit in a, a little bit of a breakdown of, you know, uh, what I thought about Shibirium, but let's, let's talk about it again. <clears throat> so Shibirium is created, um, in order to, um, you know, decrease the cost of, you know, trading all the SHIB coins, right? Um, the SHIB tokens and, uh, you know, not having to pay so much by going through, let's say, your normal transactions in your in your um, your wallet, your MetaMask wallet or Trust wallet or something like that. So it costs less. It's faster transaction times. Um, and when you say cost less, I mean like one cent in bone or less than one cent in bone. So obviously, it would be very very cheap. Um, now. It's also supposed to help out Shiba Inu by giving, you know, businesses the ability to build um, on Shibarium or with Shibarium and uh, be able to use, uh, you know, Shiba Inu and, and all that stuff and see the transactions that are going through and burning Shiba Inu. So it's supposed to help Shib in such a big way. However, <clears throat> the way that it's been broken down, it really doesn't make sense uh, how it's going to help. Um, Shiba Inu in a large way because a, a minuscule amount of you know Shiba Inu will be burned at certain levels and you're also seeing a minuscule amount of bone that's used on each transaction so you can buy ten dollars worth of bone and literally have uh, probably you can even buy a dollar worth of bone and have all of your trades covered for the next maybe year or so depending on how many trades you're going to make um for you know the positions that are on there on shibirium um it's not confirmed exactly you know how many uh positions will be offered uh on that platform if you will be able to buy directly on the platform and if all volume will even transfer over there which i am 100 percent certain it will not um because you're going to see majority of the volume still happen in cex's you're going to see you know coinbase that still has a lot of the volume in in um uh, Shiba Inu, you're going to see um, a lot of the other platforms, crypto exchanges that uh, see a lot of the volume. So I don't believe that the volume is going to transfer over there or a lot of the volume. You might see a max of 10% of the volume that flows over there. Um, but it's going to have a lot of interest from the start and you're going to see millions of dollars. It's going to look like a lot, but it's not going to be as much as you, you would hope. Um, because everybody's hoping for what uh, Ship Queenie has said in the past, where you see a billion dollars in volume, which is what you were seeing on average for Shiba Inu in its kind of heyday. Um, and if you saw a billion dollars in volume that all flowed over there, you would look at a massive amount that's burning off if it was 1%. But we're not looking at 1%. We're looking at every transaction and how much is going to be burned there, which will be less than a penny and a certain portion of that will go towards SHIB burns. So it's not really affecting it that much or as much as you wanted it to. So anyways, to get back to the kind of question at hand, where do I see bone with that? So bone depends on how much of an impact it has on Shiba Inu because Shiba Inu holders are gonna be the kind of main reason to why you are trading and moving on Shibirim in the first place. So if you're not seeing a massive benefit to SHIB, there's not going to be that big of a benefit to bone. However, people believe that there will be that hype that's behind it. So it may be something that pushes, catches a resistance or catches a retracement and then pulls back. Wherever that retracement is, it does, you know, find a way to pull back from that point. So I think it's going to be kind of short-lived success. And just like you saw with every other project that was, that was hyped up and, you know, launched and then kind of sort of forgotten about a, a little bit, right? Where is the game at right now? I'm sure it's still available, but people are not really playing it as much. Um, so I, I'm a little concerned with that. I'm a little concerned for both of them, for SHIB and for Bone. Um, but I feel like the, the movement is going to be short-lived. Um, and I hope that a bull run happens. If a bull run somehow does start up uh, within that time frame, then it could be something that's longer lasting but it's not long lasting because of Shibirium. It's long lasting because of the, um, the news of Shibirium and then the added um, you know, volume for more of a start to a bull run. But I would imagine that we're not gonna see that happen um, you know, at that time. So that's my opinion. Um, it may go a long way for some people, but for others, you know, it may not. And that's fine. Everybody has their own strategy. I'm not telling you to think like I do. 
but uh you know make your moves however you see fit Elon said everyone will need to two robots in the future. Tesla might be the the best uh investment ever. <clears throat> Tesla is a good investment. It's 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 off and on for me, honestly. Got a meeting with a lawyer, so got to got to go. Will will be listening. Okay, well thank you for for being here. Thank you for the super chats as well and the um, gifted memberships. I appreciate that. And uh, Commando uh, Spawn, thank you for the super chat. Just remember, if you guys want tech to, text to speech um, and you want to say, you know, uh, something, say what's up or uh, have me go through a position or something like that, um, as you see on the top of the screen, $2.99 will get you text to speech. So if you're sending $2, you're like 99 cents away from getting uh, text to speech. Um, anything over that two dollar ninety nine cent mark will uh will speak. Maybe I should do it at a dollar. I'm not one hundred percent sure because I know anything that's like five dollars or below doesn't show up. So I always do uh two ninety nine. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I feel like text to speech is is pretty great. Um, but bone is supposed to be, uh, the gas token. It is supposed to be the gas token, but think about this. Um, if you, if the gas token for you is going to cost, um, you know, less than a penny to go through transactions, how much do you need in order to go through the transactions that you, you are going to do on Shibarium, right? For me, I don't even know if I will even do anything in shibarium because honestly moving it will cost just as much as if i um wanted to trade it so once i trade it it's still going to cost me the same amount so why not just uh end up uh, keeping it where it is and then just selling it when i feel like selling it rather than sending it over to shibarium and you know doing transactions over there for some reason um and then eventually off ramping it somewhere else anyway. So it really doesn't make sense. So for me or for you, how many transactions are you going to make with Shibiria? If you answer that question and you answer it with only maybe less than five transactions, um, you realize that's going to be like five cents. So you don't need to hold a lot of bone in order to go through that standard gas fee. This is why it doesn't make sense for something like B and B even though it, it costs cheap as well, it's like 15 cents or, or something like that for you to uh, trade um, on the Binance Smart Chain Network or Ethereum, it costs you maybe like $5 or 15 or, or 20 or something. That's a, a lot of money per transaction. I'm not saying that Bone needs to be a lot of money or um, Shibarium needs to be a lot of money per transaction, but more than a penny, I'll tell you that. Definitely more than a, um, one cent. I feel like it should be like 25 cents um, which would be way lower than what you normally see. And it would be a standard price that never changes. But that's not the case. And they could change it. But how often would you use bone? How often do you need bone? And, you know, to be honest, you, you don't. You don't really need it. Um, I got to go upstairs really quick. Um, I'm, I think I'm still going to be live for a little bit. I got to go upstairs and give Harper some uh, uh, breakfast really quick. So... Give me a second, because it is 8.30, and she's, she's up there. But uh, talk, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to play an ad here.
Does that child eat every day? Geez, fancy. Yeah, the luxury that she has. Um, no, I. Um, she's not even awake yet, which is crazy. <clears throat> we started putting her to sleep a, a lot later um, because she's she's older now, so um, she goes to sleep a lot later. And she didn't wake up yet, which is not like her. She's usually up by like seven, seven thirty. But she's not up. So trying to check on her to see what, what's happening, but I think the camera's off. <clears throat> um the math you did earlier on that coin is is the point where I want to be able to get to where I can assess <clears throat> that there is a discrepancy in something. Uh just knowing market cap. Uh, of the entire market. Um, I I have no idea which position you're talking about, but it's always great to be able to do that. Guys, we have a hundred, we have 169 likes, which is definitely good um, for this stream and how many viewers we've had. Uh, question as you use bone, does it burn off and reduce the supply of bone? Not that I know of, no. From what I understand, they can also add to the supply of bone. If I'm correct, which creates dilution. All right, yeah. Um. All I know is that I have a, a lot of stuff to go over um, today. I have a good amount of stuff. Um, also, if you guys haven't had a chance, um, and I don't know if you're you're interested, there may be some people here that are interested in AMC and a lot of other uh, stock positions. I want to be able to upload a lot of videos on different topics, and I like talking about stocks and stuff. So I have my um, my main channel here, which is the channel that you're watching. Um, and if you go over to either like right below the live stream and, and look at, uh, for other channels, I have, um, if you go over on my page and go all the way over to channels, you're going to see the other channels I'm associated with, or that I have, right? So I have a golf channel, I have an NFA channel, clips channel, gaming channel. So these are mine right here. If you want to go over to the NFA channel, this is where I'm going to talk about a lot of stock talk. So feel free to go and check this out and I'll have a bunch of different stuff. Like uh, recently I talked about. Uh, Beyond Meat um, or Meta. Um, I talk about AMC quite a bit because um, it is a strong position that I hold or GameStop or Tesla. Um, I talk about um, AMC quite a bit here though. So um, it will continue as we, we see fit. So feel free to go and check this out and uh, you know be a part of it over there. Uh, or you can check out my golf channel if you guys are interested, or even some of the clips from today. If you missed any of the live stream, you can either rewatch it, um, or you can go and get some of the clips, which I will have, um, you know, on here on this channel, the Matt Perry Clips channel, um, and break down a lot of this stuff. So feel free to go and check that out. But I think we're gonna end this so that I'm gonna go and get Harper up and feed her breakfast. Um, and then we'll we'll go from there. So I appreciate everybody that's here. You know, let's be real. Uh, how are all these people getting these 10K plus predictions for XRP? I mean, are we we all looking at the same chart, market cap, etc.? cetera? Um, I'd love a 10K price, but just how? <clears throat> I understand where you're coming from. That's a part that I always struggle with. Um, even though they're seeing these these 10k predictions and 100k predictions and and all these other and you're seeing uh, a lot of them and you're you're going to market cap and you're like that doesn't make sense you're going to see a trillion dollar multiple trillions of dollars in market cap but um we're we're looking at it we're not looking at the full picture here um yes the market cap would be absurd but to see every country um kind of hovering on the same currency is a whole nother deal, right? So I know that 
um, my selling points or profit taking levels will be, you know, a, a level of like four dollars or five or ten. I see DJ Trev said uh, ten dollars. I'm selling. Um, yeah, my profit taking levels will be that point. But will I hold some for the the ultimate goal of what it could be? Absolutely. Because there are people that said that Bitcoin can never hit a trillion dollar market cap, right? They were like, oh, well, the market cap is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous and Bitcoin is just not worth it. And it got to a $1.2 trillion market cap. The crypto market will be worth a hell of a lot, but what will lead the crypto market and how much will it lead by? If we see something that's not only, um, this is where it's, it's different and people are always like, compare it to the stock market. Well, we're comparing it to one market. We're comparing it to the US market here. Right? We're not comparing it to everything that could happen in the world. Think of a business that runs worldwide and trades worldwide, right? Um, that's something that is worth so much more. And now think of it as the the money that's spent in order to um, you know, purchase a lot of these things or do business could be done in this same cryptocurrency. So XRP could literally flow through banks could be or whatever position could be used as a transaction based currency that every country uses the strength of that coin is now ridiculous because it's not just one currency where we're talking about just the US dollar we're talking about the US dollar plus every other currency that's there and now we're all consolidating that into one currency whatever the value is of all currencies combined that's what we kind of can value what a global cryptocurrency could be. So it's, we, we look at the small um, picture of it, but we don't look at the big one. So for me, that's why my strategy, I have 1,787 coins, which is not a lot. People have 5,000, 10,000 coins, um, but I have 1,700. What I will do is most likely take my profit, if not a little, a lot more, it's somewhere around $3, which would be about $3,000, $2,000 profit, $1,000 that I put in there, right? Um, and then the rest that sits in there, you'll see me take profit as time goes on um, just a little bit, but then I'll have 100 to 500 XRP coins just in case we see 10,000 or $100,000 per coin because I'm not going to be that same person that um, you know sold 10,000 Bitcoin for a Papa John's pizza. Like that's not how that's going to, like that's not going to work for me. Um, and I want to find a way to be a part of everything at least a little bit. If I have one coin of everything, um, I would love it. Um, whether it's one of Bitcoin, one of Ethereum, one of XRP, one of ADA, at least the end goal, seeing one of absolutely everything would be fantastic because you never know what they're going to be. You never know. How is Matt not at 200K? How close are you? I'm actually not close at all. It's been hovering around. It's been hovering around um, 199,000. I'm still at that level. Um, it went up to 100. It went up to 199.1, uh, but then ended up decreasing by like 50 subscribers. So I gain subscribers and lose subscribers. Uh, XRP hits five. Okay. Uh, do you still hold your ETH? I don't hold my ETH. Actually, I had to, I had to sell it. That was the main, uh, portion of where it's like, it's, it's the, I'm pulling from my short-term investments rather than because YouTube is not really making that much right now. And it's all because, you know, views are down and, um, you know, a lot of these live streams don't really get as uh, much of a traction because the the market is not thriving. You know, I could do a lot of stock market uh, talk. We could literally go back to uh, stock market talk, um, and and focus on that, which isn't that's not really thriving that much either. But we're still seeing probably some more successful things that are happening there when crypto when crypto falls down it's like everything in crypto falls down when the stock market is decreasing you still see some things that are thriving and have potential to run <clears throat> so that's where i haven't made that transition back because i didn't really want to um and if i would have made that transition back to let's say um the stock market talk 
then I probably would have been well over 200,000 subscribers at this point and seeing a decent amount of revenue. So no, I don't have my ETH. Um, I don't have ETH and I don't have my BNB, which is uh, a larger portion of what I, I wanted to keep and I was using as a form of funding whenever I saw a project that I wanted to buy. Um, but now it, it, it sucks because I'm pulling from the short-term investments and if things remain the same, I'll end up pulling from long-term investments, which would suck even more. Um, but this comes first. Obviously, bills always come first. So um, we'll figure it out. I will figure it out. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, Stock Talk on this new channel, because I could do it on here and probably get, you know, two to 3,000 views, but I'm doing it over there, getting one, uh, sometimes 1,000 views at max, um, and uh, that's fine. It's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, maybe there's a way to incorporate both uh, stock market and crypto talk. There, <coughs> there is, but it, it sort of like alienates a, like, because YouTube pushes one side of it. So if you're talking about stocks. Um, a lot of times they won't push anything to the, the crypto users then. And if you're talking about crypto, then they won't push really anything to stock. So I have another channel again, a full, a whole nother channel that's, um, built on talking about stocks. It just doesn't have as many subscribers. So, um, and it's not really about the, the revenue there. It's more about where's the interest. You know, um, so anyways, um, you do a good job. Well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Do you see the SEC, uh, asking Coinbase to delist everything except Bitcoin? Yes, I did. Um, I have, I'm planning on making a video, uh, about that. So expect a video later today, uh, talking about that. And, uh, we'll get into that then, but guys, I have to get out of here. Guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. Also, make sure you check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. I'm going to get out of here. Um, thank you to all the moderators, the subscribers, uh, the members, the, the super chats that came through. Um, what about the golf channel? Um, been about a month. What? What about the golf channel? Been about a month. I've, I upload on the golf channel. Yeah, I upload on the golf channel all the time. Um, back here. Uh, I, I right now I'm doing a lot of shorts, so I haven't uploaded a full video. It's been shorts videos um, because I'm uploading a, a scramble that we did and trying to get rid of that footage because we have it's it's taking up a lot of space on my SD. So. All right, I gotta get out of here, guys. Uh, you don't get notifications for it. Well, do you have notifications on? <laughs> turn them off and turn them back on and you'll get notifications. But anyways, um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.